How is it possible that a city that was once one of the richest in America with over 2 million residents ended up with large sections looking like an impoverished ghost town in less than a single lifetime? And what does it tell us about the decline of other American cities today? Because Detroit is one of the most shocking examples of urban decay in American history. And to understand the true scale of just how rapidly the city collapsed, consider this fact. In 1950, Detroit had a population of 1.8 million people and was among the richest cities in America. And today, Detroit has barely 630,000 residents left with over 30% of them living below the poverty line. In fact, Detroit is so poor and so depopulated that entire city blocks were selling for one fifth of what it would cost you to buy a one bedroom apartment in San Francisco. But here's the part that many people don't know. In the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, Detroit was the kind of place Americans were flocking to in order to get a good job, start a business, and raise a family. Thanks to its unquestioned economic dominance because of automobile manufacturing, the city could have been considered the Silicon Valley of its day. And for an entire century, Detroit experienced double-digit population growth. In fact, from 1910 to 1930, the city's population nearly tripled from 465,000 to 1.5 million. So, how was it possible for a city like Detroit to go from this over to this in just a few decades? Well, there's a lot of explanations. Some blame the 1967 riots for the decline of the city, but Detroit's population drop had already begun seven years earlier, suggesting that the riots might have been a symptom rather than the cause of the city's decline. The economic situation turned for the worse as Detroit began increasing taxes in order to pay for an expanded government workforce at the same time that its leading industry, car manufacturing, was suffering under the weight of very expensive union contracts and an international competition. The high taxes combined with high crime rates led many Detroiters to flee the city. And that last point cannot be ignored. As violence spiraled out of control and Detroit Cambridge people throughout the 1970s, Detroit became the murder capital of the United States. Those who had the means to flee did so, leaving behind thousands of abandoned homes and businesses, which became targets for arson. Throughout 1984 alone, over 800 fires were set in the city, leading Detroit's mayor to describe it as a vision from hell. Now, unfortunately, places like New York City, Los Angeles, and San Francisco are also starting to see significant population decline as they adopt similar policies with similar results. And while they are still a long way from anything close to collapse, Detroit has proven that it doesn't take as long as you might think. The good news is that recovery is possible and can actually take place rather quickly. After all, look at this picture of Hiroshima in 1945 and now in 2022. When you adopt the right policies and you make cities a place where opportunities abound, as opposed to a place where you overtax, overregulate, and fail to protect your citizens, cities can rebound very quickly, even from the most devastating of destruction.